اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على الرحمة المهدى محمد بن عبد الله معلم البشرية وهاديها إلى سبيل الرشاد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اقتفى أثره إلى يوم المعاد إخوة الإيمان أوصيكم ونفسي بتكوى الله تعالى يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفه فأقم وجهك للدين حنيفا فترة الله التي فطر الناس عليها الله سبحانه وتعالى in the holy Quran he instructs prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and by extension each one of us فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا That we should stand firm in devotion to the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as an inherent you know, inclination for us to recognize that there is a creator and therefore worship this creator. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَأَقِمْ That you should stand firm and devote yourself 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this religion. And the religion here has been referred to as Al-Fitra. And this is inshallah ta'ala our subject of discussion for today. We are going to discuss Al-Fitra, this inherent inclination that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created each one of us, all human beings, with that inclination, natural inclination, to recognize the fact that there is a creator. And therefore, if there is a creator, he deserves to be worshipped by the creation. This is the fitrah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with, that inherent nature, that inherent inclination. And that inclination is not only to recognize the fact that there is a creator who deserves to be worshipped, but rather it goes beyond that, that we also recognize al-khair wa sharr, that we know what is righteous, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is not. Now, when this fitra is corrupted, as we have seen in the recent past, we are leaving the effects of corruption of this fitra. What is going on in Gaza today and for 75 years and more is the corruption of al-fitra, where people are ready to kill and it doesn't bother them. They are ready to do whatever they desire or wish and it doesn't bother them because the fitra has been corrupted. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with this al-fitra and he has strengthened this fitra through knowledge by sending messengers and prophets for us to appreciate, to strengthen our understanding or acknowledgement that there is a God. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith narrated by Abdurrahman ibn Sakhar al-Dawsi, ما من مولود إلا ويولد على الفطرة. There is no human being that is born except he is born in this state of natural inclination to recognize the fact that there is a God, and this God deserves to be worshipped, and they recognize, you know, good and evil. And as we have said, that when this fitra is corrupted. There is, you know, when somebody commits a sin, maghabbatuha, the consequences of one committing a sin, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is something that probably some of us have not appreciated, that when someone commits a sin, the ill and the harm and the evil of that sin is not necessarily limited to that person who has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are leaving the effects of people having their fitra corrupted, what we are living today. And this is what is called shu'umudhamb. Shu'umudhamb is equated, or ulama give an example, if somebody today was to raise dust, it will, it will not be limited the dust will not only enter the person's eyes, but it will also enter other people's eyes. So this is shu'umudhamb, that the effect of that sin will be felt by even other people. The punishment is limited to the one who has erred, the one who has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the effect of that will be felt by multiple of people. And this is similar to a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you know, a people were in a safina, they were in a ship. And, you know, the people on the lower deck, they wanted to bore a hole. If the people on the higher deck left them to bore a hole in that ship, all of them are going to, you know, die. So this is the effect of scenes that we are seeing today. And that is why you can see the importance of us doing da'wah, regulating ourselves, and also always checking ourselves so that our fitra at an individual level remains 
what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and instilled in us. And also when we are doing da'wah to other people, reminding them, inviting them to this fitra, fitrat Allahi, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also because we do not want to leave the consequences of their evil or of the things that they commit. The second hadith, hadith narrated by Iyad ibn Hamar, qala, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يخطب I had the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم while he was delivering a sermon and he says إن ربي أمرني أن أعلمكم ما جهلتم مما علمني في يومي هذا that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has instructed me to teach you what you do not know what you are ignorant about from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already taught me on this particular day. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا نَحِلْتُ عِبَادِي Whatever I have conferred on the creation, on human beings, halal. It is halal. وَإِنِّي خَلَقْتُ عِبَادِي حُنَفَاءَ كُلَّهُمْ And I created this creation, these human beings, Hunafa kulluhum. All of them are on this fitra, this inherent inclination or disposition to recognize there is a creator and also to recognize what is you know right from what is wrong. Wa innahum atathum shayateen fa avalathum an dinihim. And then shayateen came to human beings and they turned them from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we can see here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with a fitra. This fitra needs to be nurtured. This fitra needs to be protected. And it is strengthened by us understanding, or rather having knowledge, that we learn our religion. If you were to leave a human being somewhere in a desert, or in a bush, in a forest, and he does not receive any da'wah. He will always look for something to worship. That is the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled in us. I believe some of us have seen a video of a young Christian girl, probably about seven years or eight years. She's reading a book with her father. And as she's reading, and Jesus grew up and his, as he grew up he came to know more and more about God and she stops and she asks her dad but Jesus is God how does he come to know about himself and then the father says that's a very interesting question this is the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in all of us that you know even when this child of about seven or eight years is reading this and she, she's, she gets confused. And whatever the father tries to do, you, you, know, you can clearly see the confusion. In the first hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, where the Prophet says, مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِتْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ كَمَا تَنْتُجُ الْبَهِيمَةُ الْجَمْعَى هل تحسون بها من جدع من جدع إلا أو حتى أن تكون أنتم تجدعونها. That human beings are born in this inherent nature, this inclination to perceive that there is a creator, and they want to worship this creator, and they know right from wrong. You know, this child at this age realizes, but. The parents are the ones who make this child to become a Jew or to become a Christian or a Magian. Then the Prophet وسلم, gives an example. He says, Kama tantuju al -bahima. That just like animals give birth to off offsprings that are complete. You do not see them, you know, being mutilated. Somebody has cut. It is not born in that state. Hatta 
takuna antum au takunu antum tajda'una until you come and now you start you know cutting them or maiming them mutilating them this is the fitra that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in this fitra and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not stop at this he created us and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the istita'a the ability allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the sharia through the sharia we are able to know how to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take an example of the pre-islamic customs what they used to do you would find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in the quran wama kana what their prayers around the kaaba what was it tasfiqun they used to clap and whistle this is how they believed that they were worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same things that we are witnessing today the same things that we are seeing today without this sharia without the sharia people are going to come up they are going to innovate ways to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how many do we see in the name of worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somebody is running and doing a somersault and then you know turning himself on the ground or on the floor in, all in the name of worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we've seen clips where people who are claiming to be worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beating drums and they are breaking sweat you know they're sweating and mukhlisin you know they have sincerity in whatever they are doing but wrong sincerity they are not worshiping allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma shara alahum he did not prescribe for them this mode of worship so part of the blessings that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred on us after the fitra is that he created us he gave us the ability and then he also gave us the sharia when you fast you know you are fasting based on clear instructions from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are fasting you know you are fasting in accordance to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is not an innovation you did not think and just imagine this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased with me but rather you have that itmi'inan you are certain you are comfortable you are confident what you are doing is pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why we need to always be, appreciate the fact that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to al-islam this fitra needs to be protected this fitra needs to be strengthened and you will only strengthen this fitra insha'allah ta'ala through what through knowledge allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers he has sent prophets li alla yakuna lin nasi ala allahi hujjatun ba'da ar-rusul so that you do not have an excuse when you meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you would not have an excuse that you did not know what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from you li alla yakuna lin nas so that you do not have an excuse you did not come with an innovation and this is specifically why also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited innovation the bid'ah people of bid'ah you know you come up with an innovation you come up with your own ways of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma lam yashra'ah Allah things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not prescribe they were not taught by the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so you will strengthen your fitra your religion through knowledge and this is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers and he revealed books you will also strengthen your fitra through worshiping through applying that knowledge and you will protect that fitra by abstaining or avoiding al muharramat disobeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in essence you're going to weaken your fitra so much so that you might blacken it and you no longer have that fitra and this is what we are seeing today wal iyadu billah so there are many ways to corrupt your fitra but ahamuha three main inshallah ta'ala we would want to focus on three main reasons or ways that people corrupt their fitra the first one is al kibr 
arrogance and pride. You have heard people. They, you know, arrogance is batarul haq wa ghamtin nas. That you do not accept the truth. Yes, you know the truth. You know this is the truth, but you refute. You refuse it. Wa ghamtin nas. You despise people. You despise the truth. Wal iyaadu billah. And this we see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, سَأَسْرِفُ عَنْ آيَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn people away from his signs, from his religion. Which people? The people who they have kibr in their hearts. وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ Kibr is a disease of the heart where you do not accept. Yes, you know this is the truth, but you do not accept. One example the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in hadith narrated by Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr al-Dawsi was eating, you know, with the companions, and one of the companions was eating with his left hand. You know, you're seated in front of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or you know, in the congregation, you are in the assembly, you're, you know, in the midst. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is seated with you. And then this man eats with his left hand, and the Prophet ﷺ tells him, Kul biyaminik, eat with your right hand. And what, did, what does he tell the Prophet ﷺ? La astati'. And the Prophet ﷺ responds to him, La sta'ata. You will not be able. Basically, this is a dua, it is a supplication from the Prophet ﷺ. When he tells him, La sta'ata. For those who understand Arabic, we say, Ziyada. When you increase the letters in a word, you increase the meaning. And when you remove some letters, you also increase the meaning. So when the Prophet ﷺ tells him, لَسْتَعْتَ He would have said, لَسْتَعْتَ That is the original word. But he tells him, لَسْتَعْتَ You will not be able. And he immediately becomes crippled. He is unable. The end of this hadith says, مَا مَنَعَهُ إِلَّا الْكِبْرِ Nothing stopped him from obeying the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam except al kibr. How many of us you buy a suit, seventy thousand Kenya shillings, a hundred thousand Kenya shillings, fifteen thousand Kenya shillings, and then you hear the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "Ma asfala min al kaabain fa fi nnar." Whatever is below the ankle is in hellfire. What do you say? Me and my suit. A hundred thousand? No way. Lastata. You will not be able. This is the kibr that we are talking about. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you with this inherent inclination, disposition to worship Him, to obey Him. But what do you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one who has given you the ability to acquire whatever you have. Wa ma bikum. Everything that you have comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what do, you t what do you say? When you are reminded, you say, Misi wezi. I can't. When you come to hijab, our sisters, wal-iyadu billah, you know, the same thing. When you come to the brothers, you know, the mohawk, again you hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma that naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anil qaz'i the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has prohibited al-qaza'. Qaza is to shave part of the head and leave part of the head. What do you say? No, I can't. And your, your, your peers are more important than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given you a head. Your head could be like a, a bus. It could be like a stone. But what do you say? No, I can't. I can't. You're telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not telling me. When I'm reminding you, this objection, you're not objecting to me, you're objecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al-kibr, when you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arrogance, what do you expect? Many a times, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish us immediately, what happens? We believe that we are okay. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has take, taken something more important that probably the things that you're actually thinking about. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your iman, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away your taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken something more important than this dunya wa ma fiha. And this is something that we forget. So al-kibr is something that corrupts 
our fitra. It corrupts our religion. And Imam uh, Ibn Al-Qayyim fi Madarij Salikin yaqul, Sami'tu Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullahu ta'ala yaqul, Al-Kibru aswa'u min shirk I had Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah saying, Kibr, arrogance is worse than polytheism. Worse than worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other deities. Or you're worshipping a cow and you're worshipping Allah. Or whatever you're worshipping alongside with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? He says because al-mutakabbir, the one who is showing pride and arrogance and self-conceit, he has refused to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why it is worse. The, mu the mushrik, the polytheist, the one who worships Allah and something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the very least, he is worshipping Allah and something else. And that is why arrogance and pride is worse than polytheism, than ashirk. The second thing, among many things that corrupt our fitra or our religion, is a taqlid. Taqlid. Or before we talk about taqlid, uh, let us talk about al-inad. Inad is sort of like you have locked your mind. Whatever you believe in, you will not accept anything else. Somebody, whatever they tell you, you will never accept. Wherever it comes from, whether it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will never accept. So you have a closed mind. You do not accept. And Inad, we can also see it even, you know, with our children, with our children, and, you know, even fellow brothers and sisters. You tell them something, they'll be like, no, they, they never accept. An example is given here by ulama. They say there were two people walking, and they saw something, you know, on the horizon there. So as they are looking, one of them says, that, I think that is a bird. It could be a hawk or whatever bird it is. The companion says, no, I don't think it is a hawk. I think it is a goat. So as they walk closer to whatever they have seen, then one of them takes a stone and he throws, and then it flies. What does the other one say? Anzun walautar. It is a goat even if it flies. Inad. You know, we see this. You tell someone some, something, and it's like they will never accept Utanguka, sitanguka. This is what our children tell us. Utanguka, sitanguka. Inad. Wal'iyadu billah. When you come to religious matters, somebody tells you something and, you know, you have a closed mind. You do not accept anything from anyone. Whatever you believe in, it is either my way or the highway. Wal'iyadu billah. So, inad is something that also corrupts our religion. It corrupts this fitra. Al-Imam al-Bayhaqi rahimahullahu ta'ala in his Dala'il in Nubuwa, he cites a very um, instructive incident that happened to uh, Shu'ib uh, Shu'ba that he was walking. He says, Awalu, awalu ma ra'aytu aw araftu Rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Mughir ibn Shu'ba. The first time I came to know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kuntu amshi ana wa abu jahlin. I was walking fi aziqqati Makkah. I was walking with Abu Jahl in some of the streets of Makkah. Falaqiyana Rasulullah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met us. And he addresses Abu Jahl. And interesting here, uh, Shu'ba here, at that particular time, he was not a Muslim. And he calls him Abu Jahl as he narrates. The Prophet Wasallam addresses Abu Jahl and he says, Ya Abu Al-Hakam, because this was his name. Ya Abu Al-Hakam, Ama ana laka, hasn't time come that you embrace Islam? Ad'uuka ila Allah, Azza wa Jal, wa Rasuli. I am calling you, I'm inviting you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm inviting you to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Jahl tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma, yani, lisa lam tantahi, 
you have not stopped and tasubba alihatina you haven't stopped insulting our gods o muhammad you haven't stopped insulting our gods o muhammad and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells him no i'm calling you to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says if you want us to witness that you delivered your risala your message wallahi we are going to do that Abu Jahl is telling the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you want us to witness that you delivered your message we are ready to do that and then he tells him wallahi law anni a'lamu ma taquluhu haqqan ma tabatuka wallahi even if i knew what you are saying what you're telling us is the truth i wouldn't follow you and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam leaves shu'ba says fastaqbalani ay abu jahl and then abu jahl turns to me and he tells me wallahi inni la a'lam ma yaquluhu haqqa wallahi i know whatever he's telling me it is the truth whatever he's saying is the truth you know how many times and especially the youth you know your parents are telling you the truth but inad your father has told you something your mother has told you something but inad wal iyad billah You will not accept this inad corrupts your fitra it corrupts your religion wal iyad billah look at this incident abu jahl is telling mughira that wallahi i know what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us it is the truth but you know this bani qusay you know his tribe they had this and they had this and they had this and now they are claiming that they also have a messenger what are we going to do We cannot claim to also have a messenger so he refuses. The second incident Amr ibn As radiyallahu an he used to know Musaylima al-Kadhab. The Arabs have a very interesting saying. They say when they want to to say somebody is a big liar they say Musaylim akdhab min Musaylima. He is a bigger liar than Musaylima. Musaylima who you know say that he was also a messenger that he claims that he was also a messenger that he is receiving you know wahi from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so amr ibn as meets him and musaylima tries to recite to him his own quran okay and he says ya wabar ya wabar inma anta udhunun wa sa'iruka hafrun wa qafr you know something that doesn't even make sense that ya wabar ya wabar you know you are you are you know your body is you know udhunan you have ears wa sa'iruka hafrun wa qafr and amr ibn as tells him wallahi this uh, they say that the first person to say these words is amr ibn as he says ya musaylima wallahi innaka ta'lam anni a'lam annaka kadhib yes imagine he says wallahi you know that i you know that i know that you are a liar this is somebody who definitely knows that he is a liar and he he still claims that he is a messenger and he is receiving wahi from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exactly what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa jahadu biha wa staqanatha anfusuhum that you deny the truth yet even your own souls know that you are lying wal iyad billah this second you know among the things that uh, you know corrupt our fitra our religion is inad you you just locked you do not accept anything now imagine if you have kibr and you have inad what will you be you will be like the jews we see day and night they are lying 33 over 33000 they have killed over 33000 palestinians but every day they would come and face you even without batting an eyelid and they would lie to your face they would not even twitch wal iyad billah matmusul fitra you know they have corrupted their fitra kalkuzil mujakhiya the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says when you commit you know you disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a black dot a black dot a black dot until you know your heart becomes like a black vessel that to farrik you cannot differentiate between your lies and the truth you can't they have actually become they is like they now believe the lies that they are telling us wal iyad billah fitra you will only be able to strengthen your fitra 
your religion if you humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You humble yourself to the truth. And this is what Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu used to tell his governors. لا يمنعنك you, you know, nothing should stop you. If you had given a verdict that is wrong, and now you believe it is wrong, you should not be, you know, opinionated. No, 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 I'm, I'm still right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You accept. الحق أحق والحق يعلو And the last one, inshallah ta'ala, is the taqlid. You know, you imitate. You imitate, and imitation here is divided into three. Imitation of leaders, whether they are religious leaders or worldly leaders. Today I hear the youth, I didn't know what it, mean, it meant. I used to hear youth saying, he's a goat. He's a goat. And I was wondering, what is this goat? Why are you calling somebody a goat? I used to wonder, what is this goat? Until, you know, of course, now I Google, okay, greatest. Now these goats that we believe you know, they are the greatest, waliyadu billah. Most of them, if not all of them that we imitate, are people either who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not of your religion. So you imitate them. And that is why you find it difficult to wear. Your dress code is similar to that goat, waliyadu billah. The way you talk is like that goat, waliyadu billah. So you imitate, you know, those leaders. They could be religious leaders. You know, sometimes we have discussions with people of other sects or madhab or whatever it is. And the only thing that they would say, Kwanini tu badilike? It is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. It is not the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. It is Kwanini tu badilike. This exactly what the second category is, Taqlidul Aba. Your forefathers, your countrymen. Your tribe, you follow them. Exactly what the Jews used to tell the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they are invited to Allah subhanahu wa taala and the Prophet. What do they say? Hasbuna ma wajadna alayhi abana. Sufficient for us. We are okay with what. The same thing. Sometimes you have differences. You know, in a masjid, and then you hear Sisi, Sisi who? Sisi, you start referring to your tribe. Wallaiyadu billah. The same argument that was adduced by the kuffar. Even when they commit fahisha, what do they say? This is what we found our forefathers doing. And that is sufficient for them. So this is the second thing. And the third taqlid is taqlid an nudara That you are emulating your peers. And especially, you know, whether it is the youth or even the adults. Today the adults, you know, you find that your neighbor has a 21 or 36 or 48 inch TV. You also want to have a TV. You know, you just taqlid. You're just following. And taqlid is, is said to be akhdu qawl min ghayri dalil. You're taking somebody's opinion without, you know, a dalil. Without knowing their dalil. Without there being any dalil. It is just taqlid. You're just emulating. You're just imitating. You don't care whether it is right or wrong. So it could be you're emulating leaders, whether religious leaders or worldly leaders. Or you're emulating your forefathers, your parents. You are, you're emulating your tribe, whatever it is. Or you're emulating your peers. And when you come to peers, وَالْعِيَاضُ billah, You start smoking. Smoking, if you smoke, it is not, you know, it doesn't have a sweet smell. When you smoke, it is not good, you know, you don't have any good taste, but you still do it. Why? Because your peers are doing it. So, it is similar to the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَا تَتَّبِعَنَّا سَنَنَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ حَذْوَ الْقُذَّةِ بِالْقُذَّةِ حَتَّى لَوْ دَخَلُوا جُحْرَ ضَبٍ لَدَخَلْتُمُ Wallahi, you're going to emulate, you know, the sunan, the traditions, the ways of you know, the people who preceded you. You know, step by step, even if they were to go into an alligator's hole, you will still follow the suit. And interestingly enough, today we have found, you know, through now, whether it is technology or doing research and all that, why does the Prophet ﷺ give an example of this alligator's hole? It's because it is the 
filthiest, you know, place. That is where it would do everything, basically. And it would still go there. So even when you know what you are engaging in is filthy, it is, you're not getting any benefit. In fact, you're actually harming yourself, you'd still do it. وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Very quickly, we have two announcements, and I'm going to be as brief as possible. The first one is about our Friday collection. Today, we are collecting for El Dama Ravine Jamia Mosque. There is a masjid in El Dama Ravine at the center of the town, and they are contributing, or rather, they are raising funds to create a shade at the masjid. This is to protect the worshippers who will be praying outside there from scorching sun or the rainfall that is coming. Their budget is 603,000. So far, cash and pledge is 350,000 and the balance is 253,000. So we are asking you to donate generously to the boxes moving around. For those of you who would like to donate through M-Pesa, the pay bill number is 522522. Account is 11074041184118. So kindly let us donate generously. Second announcement is that on Monday, the 22nd of April, from 9 a.m., the Kadhis Court in Nairobi are inviting all of you, inshallah, for the Kadhis Court open day. Sheikh Sukyan Hassan Omar, who is the Deputy Chief Kadhi, has sent an open invitation for each and every one of us. If you have anything that would like clarification, you have anything you'd like to know from the Kadhi Scott, Monday is your day. So make your way there to Upper Hill from 9 a.m. inshallah for you to benefit. Very quickly in Swahili, Tangazo la Kwanza ni kwamba mskiti wa Jamia Mosque El Damaravin wana mchango hivi leo na ndiyo tunawasaidia. Mchango nye ni kusaidia kuweka kivuli pale mskitini. Iteko wasaidia kuwa kinga wale wanayokwenda pale kuswali kutokamana na jua kali na pochoma au mvua inaponyesha. Kwa hivyo tafadhali tunaombo tuweze kutoa msaada. Kwa wale wanaotaka kutoa msaada kutumia njia simu au Mpesa, paybill number ni 5225222. Account ni 11704041 Tangazo la pili ni kwamba ofisi ya kadhi inawaalikeni nyote siku ya Jumatatu kuanzia mwendo wa saa tatu asubuhi kwa hafla inayotambulika kama Mosque Open Day. Kwa hivyo kama kuna yoyote ambaye kwamba ana malalamishi au ana maswali yoyote kuhusu ofisi au operesheni ya, ya ofisi za kadhi basi mnaalikwa siku ya Jumatatu kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi katika ofisi zao pale Upper Hill. Sheikh naona kuna mtu anataka kuchukua shahada. Jazakum khair Sheikh Muhammad tafadhal. Sema ashadu ashadu an an la la ilaha ilaha illa illa Allah Allah wa ashadu wa ashadu anna anna Muhammad Muhammad Rasulullah Rasulullah nakubali nakubali kwa moyo wangu kwa moyo wangu nakukiri nakukiri kwa ulimi wangu kwa ulimi wangu hakuna hakuna mola mola au Mungu au Mungu apasaye apasaye kwa budiwa kwa budiwa kwa haki kwa haki illa illa Allah Allah na Muhammad na Muhammad ni mtume wake ni mtume wake tafadhali kwa msalamu
habis ya insya Allah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu anna muhammad al-rasul Allah Ashadu anna muhammad al-rasul Allah حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الحمد لله العزيز العليم الذي خلق الإنسان في أحسن تقويم والذي رحم المكلفين بنزول هذا الكتاب الكريم والذي من على الخلق بالنعم التي لا تحصى من فضله العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الرحمن الرحيم وأشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله الهادي إلى الصراط المستقيم صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فاتقوا الله الذي خلقكم وآتاكم من كل من كل شيء تحبونه ودفع عنكم ما تكرهون أيها الناس أذكركم ونفسي نعمة هي أعظم النعم كلها أنعم الله على الإنسان بها إن حفظها وقدرها حق قدرها ورعاها ومات عليها فقد سعد في حياته وبعد مماته سعادة لا يشقى معها أبدا إنها نعمة الفطرة يراد بالفطرة الخلقة التي ولد عليها الإنسان القابلة للحق المقربة بتوحيد بتوحيد الله وحده لا رب غيره ولا إله سواه المحبة للخير المبغضة للشر فلو سلمت هذه الفترة التي خلق الله الإنسان عليها من شياطين الإنس والجن والمؤثرات التي تغيرها لاختارت التوحيد والإسلام ولكن هذه الفترة لا تستقل بنفسها في معرفة تفاصيل الحق والعمل به ومعرفة تفاصيل الشر والباطل واجتنابه ولذلك أرسل الله سبحانه الرسل عليهم السلام وخاتمهم 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 نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله تبارك وتعالى فاقم وجهك للدين حنيفا فطرة الله التي فطر الناس عليها لا تبديل لخلق الله قال ابن كثير رحمه الله تعالى ومعناه انه ساوى بين خلقه كلهم في الفطرة التي في في الفطرة التي 
على الجبلة المستقيمة لا يولد أحد إلا على ذلك ولا تفاوت بين الناس في ذلك وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من مولود إلا ويولد على الفطرة فأبواه يهودانه أو ينصرانه أو يمجسانه كما تنتج البهيمة بهيمة جمعاء هل تحسون بها من جدعاء حتى تكونوا أنتم تجدعونها وعن عياض بن حمار رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطب ذات يوم فقال في خطبته إن ربي أمرني أن أعلمكم ما جهلتم مما علمني في يومي هذا كل ما نحلته كل ما نحلت كل ما نحلته عبادي حلال وإني خلقت عبادي حنفاء كلهم وإنهم أتتهم الشياطين فأضلتهم عن دينهم وحرمت عليهم ما أحللت لهم وأمرتهم أن يشركوا بي ما لم أنزل بها سلطانا قال البغوي رحمه الله تعالى في تفسيره قيل معناه أن كل مولود يولد في مبدأ الخلقة على الفطرة أي على الجبلة السليمة والطبع المتهيئ لقبول الدين فلو ترك عليها لاستمر على لزومها لأن هذا الدين موجود حسنه في العقول عباد الله فالفطرة يراد بها محل الإيمان وهو ما جبل عليه الإنسان وما خلق الله في طبيعة الإنسان وهيأ قلبه له لقبول العلم النافع والعمل الصالح والمعنى الثاني لتفصيل الفطرة هو الدين ونور الوحي وعلم الشريعة قال ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما لا تبديل لخلق الله أي لدين الله وقال الإمام البخاري رحمه الله تعالى قوله لا تبديل لخلق الله لدين الله خلق الأولين دين الأولين والدين والفطرة الإسلام يشير إلى قوله تبارك وتعالى إن هذا, إن هذا إلا خلق الأولين أيها الإنسان إذا انتكست الفطرة وتدمرت فقد مات الإنسان وإن كان يمشي على الأرض قال الله تعالى أو من كان ميتا فأحييناه وجعلنا له نورا يمشي به في الناس كمن مثله في الظلمات ليس بخارج منها ولن تحفظ فطرة الإنسان وتزداد نورا وإشراقا وتكتمل قوة وحياة إلا بالعلم النافع والعمل الصالح بالإيمان والعمل بالطاعات فالطاعات تغذيها وتقويها ومجانبة المحرمات تقيها من المدمرات وكل أمر واجب أو مستحب يحفظ الفطرة ويحييها ويقويها قال سبحانه يا أيها الذين آمنوا استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم واعلموا أن الله يحول بين المرء وقلبه وأنه إليه تحشرون بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم ونفعنا بهدي سيد المرسلين وقوله القويم أقول ما ما تسمعون واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وهو البر الكريم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين القوي المتين ولي المتقين أحمد ربي وأشكره على نعمه التي لا يحصيها إلا هو وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله الصادق الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله تعالى حق تقواه واحذروا مخالفة شرعه فما أفلح من عصاه عباد الله إن الفترة التي هي سعادة الإنسان بصلاحها وفسادها شقاوة الإنسان وهوانه وخسرانه فيجب أن تجنب ما يغيرها ويفسدها وأخطر عمل يفسدها ويغيرها الكبر والعناد والتقليد 
قال تعالى سأصرف عن آياتي الذين يتكبرون في الأرض بغير الحق قال ابن القيم في مدارج السالكين وسمعت شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى يقول التكبر شر من الشرك فإن المتكبر يتكبر عن عبادة الله تعالى والمشرك يعبد الله وغيره أما العناد وهو مجانبة الحق ومفارقته مع المعارضة والمغالبة وتصلب الرأي ذكر الإمام البيهقي في دلائل النبوة رحمه الله تعالى عن المغيرة بن شعبة قال إن أول يوم عرفت رسول الله أني كنت أمشي أنا وأبو جهل بن هشام في بعض أزقة مكة إذ لقينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال لأبي جهل يا أبا الحكم هلم إلى الله عز وجل وإلى رسوله أدعوك إلى الله قال أبو جهل يا محمد هل أنت منته عن سب آلهتنا؟ هل تريد إلا أن نشهد أن قد بلغت فنحن نشهد أن قد بلغت فوالله لو أني أعلم أن ما تقول حقا ما اتبعتك فانصرف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأقبل علي أبو جهل فقال فوالله إني لا أعلم إنما أن ما يقول حق ولكن بني قصي قالوا فينا الحجابة فقلنا نعم فقالوا فينا الندوة فقلنا نعم ثم قالوا فينا اللواء فقلنا نعم قالوا فينا السقاية فقلنا نعم ثم أطمعوا وأط... ثم أطعموا وأطعمنا حتى إذا تحاكت الركب قالوا منا نبي والله لا أفعل عباد الله أما التقليد وهو أخذ القول من غير معرفة دليله أو قبول, غي... قبول قول الغير من غير حجة ينقسم إلى تقليد الآباء وإذا قيل لهم تعالوا إلى ما أنزل الله وإلى الرسول قالوا حسبنا ما وجدنا عليه آباءنا وقوله تعالى وإذا فعلوا فاحشة قالوا وجدنا عليها آباءنا والله أمرنا بها قل إن الله لا يأمر بالفحشاء أتقولون على الله ما لا تعلمون وتقليد الزعماء سواء, الزع... سواء الزعامة الدينية أو غيرها وتقليد النظراء فاتقوا الله وأحسنوا إلى أنفسكم بالاستقامة فقد أحسن الله إليكم بالهداية وأنواع الكرامة أيها الإنسان طهر نفسك من الخبائث وزكها بالاستجابة والقبول لما دعاك إليه ربك قال الله تعالى استجيبوا لربكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا مرد له من الله ما لكم من ملجأ يومئذ وما لكم من نكير عباد الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارض عن الصحابة أجمعين وعن الخلفاء الراشدين الأئمة المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم ارض عنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الكفر والكافرين والشرك والمشركين يا رب العالمين اللهم دمر أعداك أعداء الدين إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسرنا وما أعلنا وما أنت أعلم به منا اللهم اللهم المقدم اللهم المقدم اللهم أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت اللهم اغفر لموتانا وموت المسلمين 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 برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اكشف عن المسلمين البلاء اللهم اكشف عن المسلمين البلاء اللهم اكشف عن المسلمين البلاء اللهم تولى امرنا تولى امر كل مؤمن ومؤمنه وامر كل مسلم ومسلمه برحمتك 
ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma faqihna fi ad-din wa faqih al-muslimin fi ad-din Allahumma a'idhna wa a'idh dhurriyyatina wa min iblisa wa dhurriyyatihi wa shayatinihi wa awliyaihi wa atba'ihi ya rabbal alamin ibadallah inna allaha ya'muru bil 'adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkar wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkarun فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر وأولى وأتم أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سووا صفوفكم الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أفقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاة ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سبحان رب العالمين سبحان رب العالمين سبحان رب العالمين سبحان رب العالمين سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم انت السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام عليكم اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفوث الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون 
سبحان الله الحمد لله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير